going on, my friends? My name is Gary, and this is my channel, Weakest of Weeks. If you're a first-time viewer, I appreciate you clicking on the video, and definitely consider subscribing. Here on this channel, we do a bunch of different vehicle how-to stuff, a lot with sobs, most recently some Volvo things with my Swedish meatball here. This is a 2015 and a half Volvo XC60 R design. And what we're gonna be doing is installing a factory trailer hitch on this vehicle. Now, full disclaimer, I've never installed a trailer hitch on a Volvo. I have with some other vehicles, but I imagine the Volvo will be somewhat similar. I ended up picking up a factory trailer hitch used, the wiring module, some other odd bits along with that. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> Here's what we ended up picking up used. We got the sandwiching brackets to bolt this into place. Of course, the bolts have a module. There's the part number. I imagine there's probably a couple different part numbers for this module throughout the years, but this is the one I got. 40 amp fuse. I had to pick up separate from my local auto parts store. Most importantly, physical hitch itself. This is a factory Volvo, or I guess Tule for the Volvo, and then have the rubber end cap, which comes off, the multi-pin connector, and then a four-pin connector right here. So you have options when hooking up your trailer. It's nice the caps are still on there, so water doesn't get in there. The harness has a nice grommet, some sheathing, and here's one of the ends that plug into that module. There should be two existing in the trunk section, somewhere in there. Now here's the downside of buying something used off eBay and somebody having this installed previously. Realize this white wire is missing something. I believe that's an eyelet for a ground, no big deal. I'll likely solder a new one on there. But what I don't know is this blue wire. Now from photos of this harness, it looks like it comes out, it loops and it like tapes into itself on here. So I have no idea. Here's the harness part number but I think I'm gonna tape that blue wire off for now and then come back to it. These are the parts that we have. I'll put the part numbers in the description. So let's go ahead and start by removing this rear bumper on this 2015 and a half XC60. To remove this bumper for starters, we're on the driver's side of my US spec Volvo. We have five T20 screws. Now, most of the time this thing is garage kept and clean, but unfortunately, literally earlier today, I had to park in some muddy grass. So it's a little bit muddy. <laughs> underneath the bumper there's actually two eight mils that we need to remove got one right here and one other rusty crusty one right there that one is removed this little bolt was rather stubborn definitely gonna be looking at some replacements of those and this one is now removed now before you go tugging on this rear bumper, thinking it's all removed by removing five screws on each side, well there's another two T25 screws you need to remove. One on this side on the passenger and then another one on the driver. So if you look up close, it's not just a rubber piece, but you can kind of make out the head of a T20 torque screw. So we'll go ahead and remove both those next. And that goes like such. So now we'll just kind of work our way around, release it on both sides from those clips. Apologize for some of the goofy camera angles. I'm not really dealing with a lot of space right here. So my tech Piper here, she's having some issues with her paws and she doesn't want to scratch 
you paint. So she's just going to be facilitating at this point. What do we have to do next? All right, we'll go ahead and gingerly try to work our way up and release that. That looks good. At some point, there's going to be a connection for these rear parking sensors that I don't know where that connector is just quite yet, but we'll flip to the driver's side back over there and do the exact same thing. So one of the green clips came out. That's no big deal. This is actually what the T20 torque screw goes into. So we'll just need to make sure we put that back in the right spot. If you have two people, it's a lot easier. You can have one on either side of the vehicle. So for me, unfortunately, I'm a one man man. So I'm jumping back and forth. Okay, so it looks like the main rear harness is on this passenger side. There's a tab. Just need to push in. And I think we're good. I'll get this out of the way. Here's a closer look at the rear main harness connector. So it's a pretty rigid tab, but you just push that in and that'll release from this main rear harness right there. Now with the rear bumper removed, and quite honestly, that's technically a rear fascia, and then this is the rear bumper or the crash bar, whatever you wanna call it for sake of things. I've been calling that a bumper, even though I know it's technically the fascia, whatever. I'm using these terms kind of interchangeably, even though technically I know that's not the case. Anyways, what we need to do now is remove this rear crash bar. There's three 13 millimeter bolts on both sides. I'm gonna leave one in place for now. This side. We now have a floor jack supporting the bottom side of this muffler and then we have two other 13 millimeter bolts that we need to remove, one on either side to loosen up these muffler brackets. And I'm going to go ahead and lower this. And if you're wondering the point of lowering this muffler down, well that releases this heat shield gives us more room for where these brackets need to go and to figure out what orientation. These heat shields are nice thin metal so you can easily bend them down. If you notice there's one hole here, one way down there, way, way, way too far down. So it's easy to overlook this. It's like a rubber piece we need to peel off. And nasty little thing get rid of that but then that exposes the second bolt so these are the two bolts farthest back and here is that bracket and the orientation goes like this i don't know if that makes sense but that's the way it needs to go and it goes in like such and what that does is it sandwiches this frame rail. What we need to do is get these little sandwich brackets in the two 60 millimeter bolts in. I already started the passenger side. Highly recommend putting some Loctite. I have some medium strength Loctite in there. I'm gonna go ahead and carefully lower that down. And then if this focuses, you can kind of see exactly where the bolts need to be. So this is a little bit low. We need to remove this piece. This one looks like it's right about in place. So 
So we can kind of manipulate this, you know, lift it up, push it in, push it out, do what we need to do to line this up. And then for the sandwich bracket, we have it like such. So this is the bend and it needs to go in like such. So once this is in, it should sit flush against this frame rail. Slight correction on the mounting hitch bolts, those are actually 18 mils, not 16. And I highly suggest using a 18 mil ratcheting wrench to get them most of the way and finalize tightening them with a regular wrench or socket. Hex set here, it's a number six. And then I have a seven mil on the back side. And it's a simple nut and an Allen. So we're gonna go ahead and remove all four of these and pull this big plastic connector off temporarily to figure out how much we need to cut for the rear fascia. Crash bumper goes on one way, two bolts at the top and one at the bottom, slips right over the hitch we just installed. Having a floor jack underneath here makes your life so much simpler if you're doing it like myself, just via one person. So we have the floor jack raised up a little bit. I have the heat shield bent back into place the exhaust hangers lined up and now we just need to start a 13 millimeter bolt that holds this bracket into place so that one is started and we need to do the same on this side here's what it looks like with the hitch officially mounted so as a recap, we have the four 18 millimeter bolts and the two sandwiching brackets that actually fasten the hitch to the vehicle. We refastened the two hangers, which are secured by two 13 millimeter bolts. And of course the six 13 millimeter bolts, three on both sides for this crash bar. All right, friends, make sure you follow part two on my TikTok. No, I'm just kidding. All right, but I am gonna pick up on a second day. I made some pretty good progress. Not that it's taking entirely too long. It's just I started this project relatively late in the day. I have to work early in the morning. I have a second vehicle, so I'm just gonna park this one for now. And I really have to come up with a game plan for measuring and cutting that rear fascia to get it, of course, over that hitch that's now poking out in a clean manner. So we're gonna fast forward through time. I'm not gonna have a part two. The video will pick back up tomorrow when we come up with a game plan for that. But my thought process on this is to bring it inside and figure out exactly how we can get off this lower section of the diffuser. So that way we can pretty much set the rest of the fascia back onto the vehicle. And then we can set this on, take some measurements, take it off, trim it, set it back on, so on and so forth as many times as we need to. But it's going to be much easier to manipulate and move around just this lower section that it is the entire thing. So I think for starters, what we need to do is figure out how we can get these clips out safely without busting them off. So I got some trim removal tools, and if these aren't sturdy enough, I'll probably just get some flat blade screwdrivers and go from there. Got it off. Got some things marked up. I put some painter's tape on this rear diffuser. Kind of got a baseline. I mark what I thought to be is centered. I mark different points in between these two pieces a couple different times. And then from here to here, I have three inches and pretty much just carried it down. Now I know this portion is gonna be way too far down. I'm gonna have to work my way up to where I'm comfortable, but for now I'm just using this as a baseline. And then of course the electrical stuff with that, I think I'm gonna come up with a different solution little cleaner of a look but for now I'm gonna try to cut here here and here
one and a half inch cutoff wheel, not quite deep enough. So if you're skilled with a bigger, I think it's like a four and a half inch cutoff wheel, that'd probably be a little bit easier. Uh, even with this special plastic cutoff wheel, you do get a little bit of melted plastic, but also could be attributed to the speed I was running this at. But my thought was to cut it a little bit more narrower, get the base sizing right, and then come in here and manually hand sand it. Here's the first mock-up after the first initial cut of this rear diffuser. And it's looking pretty good. I have this thing centered up pretty darn good. Definitely need to trim this up a little bit higher. Complication with that is because this dives down in here, it's a gradual curve. It's hard to predict how high up we need to go. But outside of that, it's looking pretty solid. And if you're wondering how exactly is this fitting so good, with that electrical connector box or the bracket back here. Well, that is actually right there. Yeah, so uh, let me show you what I ended up doing. I decided to cut this bracket off ever so gracefully with the cutoff wheel right there. And I just made a couple passes back and forth. And then when it felt like it was a little bit loose, I wiggled it back and forth, snapped it off the rest of the way so it didn't actually cut into the body of the supporting structure of this hitch. I'm going to clean this up a little bit, spray some protective paint over there so it doesn't rust. So that makes it a lot better for this diffuser to sit back. Now I do need to trim about a quarter inch more from down here because this hitch juts out for added support. So I need a clearance for that. And then if you're wondering my solution, well, you're gonna have to wait on my plan for the bracket. After a few more cuts, okay, let's be honest, probably like four or five more cuts and roughly about three quarters of an inch higher up on this and some clearancing underneath there. We have a good solid mock fit going up here. So I'm quickly realizing why there's not a lot of documentation online about somebody doing a factory Volvo hitch on a R design model because the hitch of the factory version sits way up, the R design diffuser sits lower. They don't exactly play nicely. So I'm happy with the clearance as far as these loops. But the main problem right now is the pin. Since the whole point of this install is to have a functional trailer hitch, I had to get crafty on how to make a hitch pin fit without wanting to cut any more material nothing. out. The idea was to use a heat gun to make the plastic soft enough to push slightly inward. Unfortunately, I got a bit impatient when I heated the visible portion of the diffuser up. I ended up smearing and discoloring the plastic. Now, looking back, definitely learn from my mistake and only heat the back side up. Anyways, once the plastic was soft enough to mold, I then used a half inch socket extension to make a slight dimple. This was done on both sides. Looking more into the wiring situation here, and I'm definitely glad I started poking more into this used electrical receptacle, mainly because I thought it was really weird that the electrical tape on here is this like friction style tape, but then right over here, there was some shiny vinyl electrical tape. So I peeled that back. One, I found this wire stuffed in the sleeve going nowhere, cut ends, which this should be a ground. And then under closer inspection, there's actually two wires cut. So very glad I looked further into this. Not only did I find this random ground underneath here, but these two wires that could be arcing off one another. So there's those, there's also a missing eyelid off here. Again, I bought this used. Didn't really know it was cut up until I went to pick this up. So that's rather unfortunate, but it is what it is. And here is my solution. This universal seven pin. And then of course the four pin right there. The only problem with that is this again is universal. You have to get a electrical connector. Now you can buy one new. I ended up buying this at Walmart. Part number will be in the description. This you can get new, but I ended up going to my local junkyard, pulled this off a Chevy Avalanche with a, I think a factory tow package. I don't know. It had a Delphi part number on it. So I have reason to believe it's original. And here are the wires. The only difference being the center wire on this one is a light green. Center wire on that is purple. This for power has red where that one is black. All the other ones match up perfectly. So I think I'm gonna frank and hack this together. Unfortunately, this original Volvo one doesn't unplug. It's kind of potted in there, but that's no big deal. I'm gonna cut that, go ahead and solder this on and pretty much you know, tape everything back up, clean it up. And then this will be a much cleaner solution than this big old block. Now I can make this work 
Very simple to mount, four bolts, but I'm hoping to do away with that where this one has some clips. So as long as I cut the rear diffuser perfectly, this will lock into place. And also I like the added benefit of having another disconnect point right here. So now I'm marking where I want to place this new electrical receptacle. Ideally, I'd want it up top here, a little higher up, but the crash bar in behind here is just going to cause too much issues with that. So I'm moving it a bit low. Is it ideal? No, not by any means, just because of the angle of it and everything. But you know what? At this point, I already made a couple boo-boos on this thing, so it is what it is. I have a two-inch hole saw, so I'm going to run it forward clockwise to start the pilot hole and then once that breaks I'm actually going to run this in reverse and I am cutting on the face of this and I think it's going to get a cleaner cut this way especially running it in reverse once we get that pilot cut through. <laughs> idea where to mark the remainder of this receptacle. Franken hacked harness is back together, zero crimps all soldered now here is a extra ground wire honestly i don't think that's used in the original one but it is in the pinout for this connector so i just decided well i'll go ahead and utilize that ground i put a new eyelet on that one that's in the interior of the vehicle and everything is nice loomed up the original sheathing is underneath here and then i wrapped it with some friction tape just for added assurance and then this grommet i actually flipped uh, it was facing the other way, didn't really make sense to me, and I ended up flipping that. But here is the original Volvo one, everything cut off the back. This one is long because I just didn't do anything with it because I just utilized the wire that came with this one. So underneath here, I'm going to remove this grommet, that's where the new grommet will go. I remove temporarily this 8mm bolt, that is where this ground is going to go here's that grommet and we'll fish this inside this back cargo area but we'll start down here first and get this stuff out Access panel is removed here and just need to get our hand underneath here and fish the wire underneath this portion. Cover comes off, that's where we need to do the 40 amp fuse right there and you kind of have to feel around but we'll be two connectors here. 40 amp fuse. There, put this cover back on. Like such, we have the Volvo module. Here you can see all three connectors hooked in. And this needs to go kind of underneath this foam piece and should rest up against the wheel liner right there. 
So I ended up getting some new tape. This module is now locked in there. Go ahead and put this little carpeting insulation stuff back. There we go. Now the main focus point right now is this ground. So it is a little bit short, but we're gonna go ahead and tie it in right there. Cause I don't believe there's any closer ground points around. Need to finalize tightening these two 10 mils, but I have the eyelet right here for that white wire for this trailer harness. I actually loosened this up, lifted it up a little bit, gave me enough slack, tighten those down. And then here is what it looks like on this end. We have a little bit of slack here. There's the grommet coming through. Here's the ground for this eyelet. And then a cool little trick because this is some thin sheet metal that can kind of be a razor blade. I actually took a piece of vacuum hose, put a slit in it, and then stuffed it on here. So that's a nice little section to where if there is any movement with this, it won't slice a hole. Here's the finalized install. Everything is back together. Off camera, I installed the two 8mm bolts underneath that secure the lower section of that rear diffuser, the five torque screws per backside wheel liner, and of course the torque screw, one on that side, one on that side for the inside of the cargo area. So everything is officially back together, and here is the finalized product. If you're wondering as far as the diffuser color, I slicked on a coat of Forever Black Trim Restore that helped mask up my little boo-boo that I did right there whenever I was dimpling in those ends to make room for the pin. So the traditional style pin with a cotter pin doesn't work, just not enough room. So I have this fancy pin that I'll link in the description that works beautifully. Slides in, you pull the end, swing it down, and it locks into place just because I don't have room for this big old cotter pin. Here is the receptacle, seven blade, four blade. Ideally, I would have liked it a little higher up, a little closer over to here, but just how the rear diffuser is designed. It is what it is, but I think it's a pretty clean design, very usable, and personally a lot better than the factory big ol' block that you see here, that you have to hack away a huge section of it. So if you're wondering as far as if this thing works or not, well, press the brakes, let off the brakes, left turn signal, Right turn signal, brake with the turn signal, keep holding the brake, and put on the left turn signal, turn off the turn signal, and let off the brake. The trailer we just hooked up to test the wires was a four pin connector that worked out beautifully. Unfortunately, don't have a trailer with a seven blade to test the functionality of that connector. But what we will do is check with this Hopkins 48503 
connector. This is a hardwire connector that I picked up at my local auto parts store. You should find it at just about all the common ones in stock. But what's nice about it, it's got a quick and easy test light function on here. So we don't need a physical trailer to test. We're just going to plug this connector in. Don't need any hard wiring. Just simply plug it into what we previously installed. But upon hooking it up, I immediately got an alert that the Bliss and CTA is off and the trailer is attached. But we'll go ahead and hit the hazards here. We'll go to the back with the connector attached. And you can see these two lights are flashing. We get a left turn signal, right turn signal. That's auxiliary. This is for the running lamps. This one over here, if this was lit up, is for the reverse. And then that is if you have a trailer brake, that would be lighting up. So this is working exactly how it should, both the four pin and the seven. So if you're wondering if adding a trailer module in the components with it to your P3 Volvo like this 2015 and a half is simply plug and play, unfortunately that is not the case. But to program it, there's gonna be two options. The first one being DIY, do it yourself. You need what's called a dice module. That is the physical component that you plug into the onboard diagnostic, the OBD2 port of the vehicle, and then the other side is a USB, plug it into a laptop, and then you need VITA. VITA is the software component of this. And to do that, well, there's a cracked version or the legitimate subscription-based service that you pay, I think it's $75 at least in 2022 for three days, and then you pay per component you are programming to the vehicle. Now, once upon a time, you can save money by getting a cheap Chinese clone dice module and then pay the legitimate subscription and program modules like the trailer module to your vehicle. Now, I believe in 2022, they have kind of did away with that. I think Volvo cracked down the Vita system, so I don't think they support the knockoff clone. So you can buy the legitimate dice module, but it's gonna be rather pricey. So with that all being said, for me, it was best to go with option number two, that being contacting my local dealer and having them program it and take all the liability out of it. Yes, I can possibly save money by buying a Chinese clone dice, a cracked version of Vita, but there's no guarantee that it's going to work. With the dealership, it's a little more of a guarantee, and if it didn't work, more than likely, they would warranty it and would go ahead and try to reprogram it if it didn't work the first time I hooked up a trailer. So just know that, and also the cost. I don't know what it costs for a used dice module, whether it be a cracked or legitimate. In the Vita, I think it's 75 plus another, say, $40 for the programming of the trailer module. So it, it quickly adds up. But what I can tell you is each dealership will be different. For me, I live in Columbus, Ohio. I went to Buyers Volvo in Columbus. And as far as price goes, $81.25 for the labor side of it and $43.59 for the parts required. And then after tax, everything out the door, $144.95. So I think for $145, it was well worth it to go to the dealer and have them take all liability and to know that it gets done and it gets done properly. So I just simply dropped the vehicle off, they programmed it, a couple hours later I picked it up and I tested it immediately and it works. So just know that there's the two options, either DIY or dealer, but if you go with the dealer, I highly recommend call them in advance to get an idea on pricing before you commit to anything. So with that being said, I hope this video helped you out. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, drop a comment down below and definitely consider subscribing. I appreciate you watching and I'll catch you friends next time.